Ladies and gentlemen, AMD are already giving us hints of what to expect with RDNA 4. Sure, there's not only going to be a huge performance uplift AMD are hinting at, but also significant architectural changes and feature changes which will be incorporated in the silicon. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10 which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So this was an interview conducted by 4gamer.net with David Wang, who is a senior vice president and of engineering over at Radeon, as well as Rick Bergman, who is an executive vice president over at the computer and graphics business, both of course from AMD. Now this interview was uh, conducted originally in Japanese and I unfortunately need to use Google Translate because I do not speak Japanese but there's a lot of stuff said in this interview I am just touching the surface here PlayStation 5 is discussed Xbox primitive shaders mesh shaders a lot of other bits and pieces but we're going to focus on RDNA 4 because this video is already going to be kind of long and yeah that's what she said anywho let's start things out with inference accelerators and AI shall we as I'm sure most of you are aware, AMD and NVIDIA have basically diverged in how they're approaching things. NVIDIA have gone with tensicles, of course, which take up a decent size of the uh, silicon, or decent amount, should I say, of the silicon. Whereas AMD are still leveraging the compute units of the GPU. With RDNA uh, free, they also added what they were referring to as AI matrix accelerators. Now, there was some confusion, not least of which with how AMD themselves actually marketed these things, but they basically still run the instructions on the FP32 units of the GPU, but they are new instructions. They can basically run BF16, which is Brain Float 16, which is a brilliant name, as well as Integer 4, WMMA.4. That's Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate. And again, though, those are all running on the... Um, FP32 units, the ALUs of the GPU, so they are not, let's say, dedicated silicon space like a tensor core. Anywho, uh, David Wang said, and I quote, what we think should be done with inference accelerator installed on the GPU should not be limited to utilizing centered utilization, excuse me, centered on the image processing. Now, he went on to say that basically NVIDIA have, of course, a large scale inference accelerator on their GPU. And basically, they have done lots of stuff to make use of that, like DLSS. But they have been using, let's say, FSR without the um, same tensor cores on their GPUs. And they feel that this is what should happen going forward, that this approach is the better approach for gamers. We believe inference accelerators should be implemented in gamers' GPUs, should be made to make games more fun and advanced. For example, the movement and behavior of enemy characters and NPCs are probably the most obvious. Also, even if AI is being used for image processing, AI should be in charge of more advanced processing, specifically a theme such as neural graphics, which is currently gaining momentum in 3D industry. This may be more approach, uh, appropriate, says David Wang. Now, from what I understand so far about RDNA 4, and obviously we're talking about an architecture which is not going to release until at least late 2024 is that it is still going to be leveraging WMMA. I do not think um, RDNA 4 does feature uh, machine learning silicon, like for example, a tensor core. Some of my early information did state that it was using something from Zelenix, but this does not seem to be the case now. Um, possibly this is wrong. I would love for it to be wrong because it would be quite curious to see what AMD's approach is. I was told that WMMA, however, gets version 2, which allows significantly more performances, about two times more performant per CU for those instructions. Basically, it leverages full SIMD lane usage. Now, there are a lot of changes, however, I was told across the architecture, and I probably don't know all of them, and that is putting it 
mildly, including but not limited to things such as a new generation of Infinity Cash, the changes to the GCDs themselves, basically the GCD in N41, I was about to say 31 there, now gets basically split up into GCXs. So there are three GCXs, at least according to the current numbers, this could change. There are three GCXs per GCD on N41, and each of those GCXs contains 48 compute units. However, the number of ALU per CU does seem to be the same. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this comes together because basically, from my understanding, there are significant improvements to the AI machine learning capabilities of the GPU. I don't think I have all of the information. And again, um, obviously this stuff could change over the next several months. Now, I also want to talk about a potential feature for RDNA 4, which could be actually the introduction of a new programming model. Now, this has a lot of implications, and that is putting it mildly. We'll get into some of them in just a moment, but let's talk about RDNA 3 again. Now, you may recall at launch, um, I actually did quite a few deep dives into this, and AMD were providing us the information. But one of the slides they released was CP, Geometry, and Pixel Pipe Advances. Now, CP, of course, um, is basically the command processor, and that uh, inc that introduced, excuse me, multi-draw indirect accelerator. Now, MDI is not something that is new to AMD. In fact, um, Microsoft, uh, if you recall back in DirectX 12, when it was kind of, you know, being a thing and they were getting ready to release it, they were talking a lot about uh, multi-draw indirect and execute indirect and all that stuff. But basically, the idea here is to reduce CPU API and slash driver overhead by accelerating and gathering the passing of multi-draw commands and basically having more of the more of this stuff being done on the GPU itself. So with RDNA 3, they managed to accelerate this to around a 2.3 times performance increase over RDNA uh, 2. So if a GPU has already been fed, let's say, data from the CPU and it needs to be changed, it needs to be adjusted, then the GPU can essentially do that on the fly without constantly needing to farm out info from the CPU. A good example of this is level of detail changes. Um, I'm vastly simplifying this information, by the way. I would really encourage you guys, if you're curious about this, to do some uh, Google Foo because I don't really want to spend super long going into this because it's going to, well potentially add it a lot of extra time into the video but basically this means you get to do a lot of stuff on the fly when it comes to for example level of detail changes and this is one of the things of course that uh, is really important when it comes to seamlessly improving the quality of graphics and stuff like that and in fact they even mention in the interview for example the idea of using meshlets have been proposed as a technology that replaces the classic level of detail mechanism uh, which replaces 3d models with different degrees of detail depending on the perspective i want you to see we would like to propose this as a new standard specification for the gpu programming model now will this be a new feature for rdna4 well Unfortunately, they leave that somewhat ambiguous. We are already seeing alternatives to this, just to be clear. And we've kind of seen this with, let's say, Unreal Engine um, 5, for example, which does some really cool stuff with its GPU, uh, with its, uh, with its uh, nanite uh, technology. As for their strategy going forward, Rick Bergman says, we are a semiconductor manufacturer with a long history. Until around 2000s, GPUs were only for PC products, but since around 2000, they've also been offered for home game consoles. Currently, GPUs for PCs are steadily evolving, from RDNA 1 to 2 to 3, and we promise to evolve RDNA 4 with even higher performance in the future. In recent years, Samsung Electronics Exynos has entered the smartphone field, providing RDNA 2-based GPU IP cores. In addition, AMD's GPUs have, have, of course, found themselves in Tesla Model S and X. And we will continue to develop desktop GPUs that will not betray the expectations of gamers. They also mention, of course, that, well, when it comes to consoles, they're going to continue as well. Naturally, um, AMD have provided the... Uh, processors for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, as well as various other things like the Wii as well. Now, for what it's worth, for RDNA 4, I've personally heard performance targets of around 2.2 times 
over N31 for the highest in skew. However, I do think that this is most likely going to be FP32, uh, the T-flops performance. We'll have to wait and see what the actual raw performance numbers are. Frankly, I don't believe any performance numbers at this point anyway. Like, it's interesting, but targets A can be missed. B, they could just be incorrect targets. In other words, they were old or they are not pertinent or they could just be made up. And even if they are targets which were actually reachable, how were they even measured? So again, could it be T-flops? Could it be the FPS in, let's say, a specific game? Let's just say Doom Eternal running at X resolution. Is it with ray tracing enabled? There's a lot of different metrics which do make things like this a little difficult to even ascertain. Like, are we talking about Port Royal? Are we talking about Time Spy? Because even if you say it is a synthetic benchmark, let's just again say Port Royal, that's still quite different to say Time Spy. But um, I have heard that AMD are doing very well with RDNA 4. The issue is, of course, NVIDIA will be a very aggressive RTX 50. I personally... Um, I'm still hearing very conflicting information whether NVIDIA are going chiplet. Not a leak, um, but I personally feel that they're probably going to be doing a similar thing to the Infinity Cache strategy um, with basically the Infinity Cache... Uh, with AMD, of course, it was basically offloaded to a different chiplet. I don't think they're going to go multi-chiplets for the compute units, for the, you know, the CUDA cores and tensor cores and that type of thing. I could be wrong. Um, I have heard that Blackwell does have different versions. One is a monolithic version being tested. There is also a chiplet version, but obviously, at the end of the day, it's very difficult to know. I think Blackwell is an architecture which is essentially going to be molded and changed depending if it's data center or gaming or whatever. So in other words, whether it's RTX 50 or you know data center or whatever, it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD and NVIDIA do going forward. Battle Mage is going to launch, of course, early next year from Intel, which is going to be roughly on par assuming intel hit the targets or with the rtx 4080 maybe a little faster honestly i'm absolutely okay with that as long as the pricing is okay it's going to be a very curious several months in gpus i'm also going to be extremely interested to see what happens with the mid and low end n31 and 32 parts given of course at the moment the performance of the high-end parts from amd and nvidia aren't really the problem it's the price of the mid and low range cards that are the issue um but yeah there's a lot of other things that i could touch on on this interview in this interview excuse me there's a lot of information here but i just wanted to blast through this real quick um because i've had a couple of people message me about this interview and i just want to touch on some of the more pertinent parts there were a few things also i was going to mention but because i'm trying to double source some stuff i just don't want to put something out there and then feel like oh i'm not really that sure about it whereas with the wmma info that i you know, mentioned and the gcx stuff and a couple other bits and pieces i have had a couple of sources who have been pretty accurate previously say it to me about that oh and i did mention in another video but um yeah, we've hit 100,000 subscribers. I don't want to make such a big deal of it in this video because I already did so in the previous video, but if you missed the previous video, I just want to say thank you again for that. Um, you can watch the previous one if you want my full thoughts of me on camera and stuff like that. You're kind of going into that for several minutes and kind of gushing at you guys. But uh, I just want to touch on it again in case you missed the previous video and you're like, well, why didn't you say anything? I did. <laughs> Twice now. But anyway, much love. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe and have an amazing day. Bye for now.